Hello and welcome to this Astranti video. Today we will be introducing you to the topic of moving averages and showing you how you can calculate 3 and 4 point moving averages. Moving averages are incredibly useful in business for identifying long term trends. And if you're studying for P1 or BA1, these may be something you'll be required to calculate in your exam. This extract is from our video on chapter 15 of our P1 course, but if you want to see the full video, this can be found on the Astranti website, where you can also find a whole range of study materials to help you pass your SEMA exams. But for now, let's jump in and consider moving averages. So let's start by looking at why we would use moving averages. The ultimate purpose, the overarching purpose of using moving averages is to highlight the long term trend in a data set. Because if you have a data set, it's likely that you're going to have lots of irregular results that are far higher and far lower than the rest of the results, etc. And using the moving averages basically reduces the impact of those irregularities and smooths out the dispersion of results. So, for example, if we look at this graph here, we can see the results are going up and then they are going down, etc. And we don't necessarily know exactly when the next up is going to appear and the next down is going to appear. So we have a moving average which will ultimately look a bit like a line that goes across the data set and that will be far more useful for us when we come to predicting future results. But let's look at an example and we're going to start by looking at the three point moving average. And let's say that we are management accountants working within an organization and our manager comes to us and says, look, management accountant, I want you to predict the sales in the next year. And the next year is 2000X4, and they've given us the previous results from 2000X0 all the way through to 2000X3. So we've got to somehow predict 2000X4's results from these figures. And we can do this by using the moving average. It's far easier to demonstrate than it is to explain. It's actually a very simple method. And as the name would suggest with a three point moving average, we need to look at three points. And the three points that we are going to look at is a particular value and then the data before it and the data after it. So for example, taking 2000 X zero quarter two, and the figure for that particular quarter, then also using the period before and the period after. And once we take those three figures, we find the average of them. So let's calculate the moving average here. So we've got 24.6 million plus 38.4 plus 36.9, divide that by three, and that gives the result of 33.3 million. So that figure then goes into our moving average column there. And then the whole thing moves along one. So now we use quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, and follow the same process, find the average, and put that into the column. So that's now 41.1 million. And we repeat the process again and again and again for each of the quarters or each set of three quarters. And what you can see when we put that on a graph is how the line really starts to even out, starts to smoothen now. You can see that the actual data set, the blue line here is a bit all over the place. It goes up and down and by different amounts each time. But the three point moving average is a much straighter line and that makes it far easier to predict future sales because we can follow that trend line. Remember, that's the point of the moving average to find that longer term trend. But you can also see that it's far from perfect. It still wiggles about a bit. And the reason for that is because in general, businesses do not use three quarters. They use a four quarter year, 
hence the name quarter, a year split into four. And therefore, a four quarter moving average is far more accurate, but it is a bit more complicated to do. And you'll soon see why it's not just a case of using four quarters rather than three quarters. So let's move back to our figures. And this time we're going to find the four point moving average. The problem with the four point moving average is that it doesn't actually assign to any particular quarter. Instead, you have to record this four point average in between the second and third value. Because quarter two or quarter three is not actually the midpoint of a four point average. Instead, it will be in between quarters two and three. But the actual process of first determining the moving average is the same as the three point moving average, except we use four quarters. So we might use 2000 XO quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four and add those figures together. So 24.6 million plus 38.4 million plus 36.9 million plus 48 million divide by four. And that gives us the moving average of 37 million. And again, you can see this goes in the line between quarter two and quarter three. Then we repeat the process this time, moving on an additional quarter getting 38.9 million, and that now goes in between quarter three and a quarter four, and again and again, so on. But the problem is here is that we can't really use this because of the fact that it doesn't actually allocate to a particular quarter. So how do we get around this issue here? It can't really work without us aligning it to a particular quarter. So the calculation we use here is to uh, basically find the average of two different moving averages. So we're now making averages of averages. And once we do that, we then assign it to a particular quarter. And this is sometimes known as the centered eight quarterly total. Not using eight different quarters, but we are using eight quarters in the calculation. So, for example, let's say that we are calculating the average of these two figures here. This particular figure was calculated using these four quarters here. And this figure was calculated using these four quarters. Hence the name of the centered eight quarterly total. So let's calculate the average now then by taking these two moving average figures, 62.2 million plus 62 million divided by two gives us an answer of 62.1 million. And that can now be assigned to 2000 X three quarter two. So repeat the process again, looking this time at the 26.2 million and at the 60.9 million, giving us a average of 61.6 .6 that we then apply to 2000 X3 quarter one and repeat the process again and again for the rest of the results. Now, when we go back to the graph, remember that when it was just a graph, it was all over the place. And when we had the three point moving average, it was a lot smoother, but it still was a bit jumpy. But now the four point moving average, you can see is pretty much a straight line. And this is a really useful way of now being able to calculate the future results to forecast the future results because we just carry on this line at the same sort of gradient here. And that will allow us to predict results in the future.